This video on metal and non-metal part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 8. So till now we have reacted metals with oxygen, with water and with acids. But still we were not able to find the exact reactant we see. For example, we had doubt between potassium and sodium. We had doubt between gold and silver. We had doubt between copper and lead. So what should we do? Now let's have this one to one fight. One to one fight. And the winner is the one which is more reactive, right? So let's react with metal with metal salts. For example, in this case, the fact is the more reactive metal will displace the less reactive metal. More reactive metal will displace the stronger metal will displace the less reactive metals from their compound in solution or molten state. For example, we'll take this with this. But this, if you see that, as I told earlier, we have used this hydrogen oxygen acid, but we are not able to determine the reactivity series. So we are using the displacement reaction that will give you better evidence of the reactivity. That is, the rule is very simple. The metal A displaces the metal B from its solution. That means it is more reactive as A is more reactive than B. Correct? Pretty simple. So if I have metal A plus solution of metal B, so if this will give solution of metal A and metal B is out, right? If this guy kicks metal out from the solution, if metal A kicks so metal B from its solution, that means A is more reactive than B. With this rule, we'll find. So scientists have done a lot of experiments on this and they have found that this is the reactivity series. For example, in, till now we were able to find that uh, this we were having confusion in this, this was clear to us, uh, this was a confusion, this was a confusion, right? So, for example, lead and copper. So, we have to find which one is uh, more stronger. So, you take this lead and you take copper solution, right? You react, you will find that you get PbCl2 plus copper. That means if you see that lead has displaced copper out. So, we see that copper has came out. Thus, I can say that lead is more stronger than copper. So if you see hydrogen we have placed here because if you take um, let's suppose iron or you take uh, potassium anything you can take. So you can take iron and you take S2SO4 right you get FeSO4 plus S2. That means iron is able to displace hydrogen also from this. So hydrogen iron is ever hydrogen. In fact, lead will also be able to displace hydrogen from this uh, H2SO4. So you take PB and you take H2SO4, you get PBSO4 plus H2. But copper will not be able to displace this one. So this hydrogen is above. So that's why if you see uh, gold and silver also, they have done like this. So end of the day, this displacement reaction is the best way actually to find the reactivity of the element. Correct. For example, let's suppose uh, we want to find the reactivity of iron and copper. Okay. So what we'll do? We have this uh, iron. We'll take this copper solution, copper sulfate. You'll react it. You get copper plus FeSO. That means what iron is has kicked out copper from the solution. So iron is more reactive than copper. Same thing you can take for let's suppose manganese and copper you want to take you can do the same thing you have this manganese you take copper solution and you'll find that you get mgso4 plus copper so manganese has manganese took out this copper and the copper is out so with this i can say that manganese is more reactive than copper why it is more reactive and all we will study when we study the atoms we'll study the structure of atoms the electrons and all and the valence electron and stability thing that we will do later maybe in the next two chapters but now just understand magnus is more reactive than copper correct so with these kind of thing you can easily find example zinc and copper if you also you want to find zinc is uh, stronger than copper or not you take zinc and you take copper you take copper sulfate solution again then what you will get is zinc uh, sulfate and you get copper so here also if you see Zinc has kicked out copper and copper is out. So that means zinc is more stronger than. So let's suppose you take uh, sodium and hydrogen. So hydrogen is not a metal, but we have put this in this. 
because sometimes hydrogen behaves like a metal also. So we have the sodium and let's take uh, this hydrochloric acid. You will see that uh, this becomes NaCl and my hydrogen is out. So sodium has kicked out hydrogen from this and become NaCl. So now is the question time. The first question is why sodium immersed in kerosene because sodium is very reactive. So sodium it will react with moisture in the water uh, air to becomes NaOH. So that's why sodium is kept in the kerosene oil so that it should not get in contact with water. Right? Not contact with moisture also. You have to write the equation for iron with steam. So we have this iron. We have the steam that is water. Very, very hot. This gives Fe3O4 plus H2. We can balance this three iron metals. Make it three here, three, three combined. Uh, hydrogen is two, two. Oxygen is four here. So make it four here. And since it is four, it's eight hydrogen now. Make it four here. This is my reaction of iron with steam. Calcium and potassium with water. So let's do this. Calcium is Ca with water is H2O gives CaOH2 CaOH2 plus hydrogen plus heat. Correct. So let's balance this. Calcium is 1 1 correct only. Uh, oxygen is 2 here. You get 2 here. So hydrogen becomes 4. Hydrogen is 4. It's all balanced. Similarly, potassium. Potassium is K plus water gives potassium hydroxide KOH plus H2 plus heat. Let's balance this. Uh, potassium is 1 1 balanced. Oxygen is 1 1 balanced. Hydrogen is 3 here. Hydrogen is only 1. So let's multiply with uh, 2. You get 4. So you are multiply with 2. 2 plus 2 4. It becomes 2 potassium. It's 2. This is balanced now. Correct. So this is my balance. The question says uh, sample of four elements were taken and uh, added to the following solution one by one. The following results were obtained. Right. So we have to find uh, what do you observe if B is added to copper sulfate solution is the first question. And we have to arrange the activity. Uh, I mean these things in the decreasing order of reactivity. So let's see this properly. Please pay attention here. The first one says that A when react with iron sulphate there is no reaction. That means I write here A plus iron sulphate is FeSO4 there is no reaction. There is no reaction. That means A is lesser than iron. So let me write iron somewhere here. Somewhere will write iron and my A is below iron. Correct? This part is done. Second it says when A is react with copper sulphate, A react with copper sulphate, there is a displacement. That means A is weaker than copper. Correct. Sorry, A is stronger than copper. That's why displacement is happening. A is displacing copper. That means A is stronger than copper. So copper will be somewhere here. Hope you understand this. Since A was not able to displace iron, a is weaker than iron, so I'm, this is my reactivity series, right? The this is more reactive to less reactive. This is more reactive to less. So since A was not able to displace iron, that is iron is more reactive than A. But A was able to displace copper, A is more reactive than copper. This is also done. The third is B is when react with iron sulfate, no displacement. That is B plus FeSO4, there is no displacement. That is B is weaker. Sorry, is, there is a displacement. Sorry, the displacement. There is a displacement there. That means B is able to displace iron from here. That means B is stronger than iron. So we'll put B somewhere above iron. Correct? B is stronger than iron. That is B is able to displace iron sulfate. This is done. When B reacts with zinc sulfate, there is no reaction. So I'm right here. Then B with zinc sulfate, no reaction is B is weaker than zinc sulfate, right? So zinc sulfate is 
stronger than B that means correct so we'll put zinc is stronger than B somewhere here hope you understand when B reacts with zinc sulfate nothing happens as B is weaker than zinc zinc is stronger than B that is done so this is also done C when reacts with iron there is no reaction so C plus FeSO4 there is no reaction that is C is what weaker than iron so we can iron I can place C anywhere from here I can put C anywhere C can be somewhere here somewhere down this line right we don't know where it is but somewhere down C will be right somewhere down somewhere down the iron correct we don't know the actual position where C will be but somewhere here it will be C so C is there C with copper sulfate no reaction C with copper sulfate no reaction so that means C should be somewhere below copper sulfate right so C should be somewhere here we don't know correct because C is not even reacting with copper so C is somewhere below copper zinc sulfate C with zinc sulfate no reaction that is C is below zinc C is already below zinc so no need to worry but we don't know the correct position of C right maybe C is just below C we don't know or somewhere here but C is something below C so we don't know C when uh, reacted with silver nitrate there is a displacement that means C is stronger than silver that means after C you have silver that means let's suppose C is silver is here then C should be somewhere here correct I'll put C here correct no issue that is also done D when D reacts with iron sulfate no reaction that is D is weaker than iron so D can be some anywhere here I'll just put here to, for timing I'll put here for timing D D reacts with copper sulfate no reaction no reaction so D will be below copper right anywhere below copper D reacts with zinc sulfate no reaction so D is anywhere below zinc D reacts with silver nitrate no reaction so D reacts with silver nitrate no reaction that is D is even bigger than silver that is D is somewhere below silver actually that's the actual position of the D so D is actually here actually so right so this is my order which I have got zinc is most reactive and D is less reactive right so now the question is what will you observe is B is added to copper sulfate solution so B is added to copper sulfate solution if you see B is more reactive than copper you see B is more reactive than copper that means if B is added to copper sulfate reaction or solution there will be a displacement reaction why because B is more stronger than first part is done second part arrange the order uh, these elements in the decreasing order of reactivity the most reactive is what B and then I have A then I have C and then I have D this is the order yes. hope you understand how I've done I reacted all these elements A with iron sulfate no reaction that is A is weaker than iron I reacted A with copper displacement that is A is uh, stronger than copper similarly B with iron displacement that is B is stronger than iron B with zinc no displacement that is B is weaker than zinc that is zinc is stronger and that's how we form this reactivity series. Once I have the reactivity series, I can answer any of the questions. Let's take one more example. Which gas is produced when dilute hydrochloric acid is added to the reactive metal? So I know that metal plus HCl dilute gives me hydrogen gas. That part is solved. Write the chemical reaction when iron reacts with H2SO4. So I have iron, it reacts with H2. SO4 it will give you FeSO4 plus hydrogen gas and this is my reaction correct what will you observe when zinc is added to the solution of iron sulfate that is I have zinc I have iron sulfate I know that zinc is more reactive than iron sulfate that means it will displace it will displace iron from this it will become zinc sulfate plus iron okay because zinc is more reactive than iron we know from the reactivity series. Thank you.